remember when I first got my driver's license, actually, when I was 16. I used to ditch class to go watch open heart surgeries. And, <laughs> and, I, and I remember the first procedure I ever saw. It was, this, it was a quadruple bypass for a patient who had a history of hypertension and diabetes. And I'll never forget witnessing this modern medicine practice right in, before my eyes, seeing this life-saving technology, even after a patient's misbehaved and damaged their own health. It was fascinating. But the one thing it couldn't do, this life-saving technology, was prevent a patient from harming themselves in the first place. But this will change, because we live in a modern era where technology is constantly driving, being evolved. Scientific, scientific discoveries behind all of this, and it's absolutely beautiful. And we're spoiled, because we don't have to wait 50 years anymore to see how technology is going to change our behavior. By 2022, we can see 50 years worth of change. And by 2032, we can see 100 years worth of change. And as next generation technology continually, continuously comes to arrive at our doorstep, medicine will become more alive. A patient, patient's health care is no longer bound to the walls of a clinic. Hospitals only become a point of care. And as we just heard, patients will be able to take their vitals with them on mobile devices and connect to the network 24-7. So here's what might surprise you. I believe that the next frontier for medical technology will take a jump into the behavioral space. Not just curative, not just diagnosis, but preventative. These are technologies that play a direct and active role in changing behavior, influencing behavior. After a patient's completely damaged their own health, we learn that these diseases that evolve from obesity and drinking and smoking are reinforced by bad behavior. We've learned that long-term passive programs have only had marginal impacts, and the only fix is prevention. We're going to take technologies from the traditional box that's been placed into, MRI scans and CT scans, and leap into these behavioral applications. Today, we have implantable contraceptions with proven efficacy, and tomorrow, a subdermal drug delivery device to address the issue of noncompliance with patients who have tuberculosis. We're going to eradicate multiple drug-resistant TB. And in 10 years from now, medical factories within our own system that has an ability to control and change our behavior. The medical technologies of tomorrow will not be about treating disease. It'll be about maintaining health. Imagine a cell with its own IP address, its own circuitry connected to a network, constantly communicating with supercomputers in real time, seeing antibodies created on the fly, influencing their interaction between proteins and genes. It gives me goosebumps on my back. We're controlling cellular behavior, having the ability to stop absorption of food, say after 2,000 calories in a day. But we don't have to do this, because in a free market, we can't take all the junk food off the table, because I love junk food. And we can't force people to exercise, and maybe we don't want to. But we can empower an individual with innovations that have the ability to manage someone's sugar on a biochemical level that can be adjusted in real time. We can increase and decrease absorption and metabolism. We can help someone say, don't let me smoke. Help me create the lifestyle I want. Don't tell me that I've absorbed too many calories in a day. Protect me from myself and just do it. Tomorrow's medical innovations will not have to perform as many life-saving heroics as I saw 10 years ago, because we're going to figure out how to use technology to save a patient from themselves, to help patients do no harm to themselves. Wouldn't Hippocrates be amazed? Thank you.